Iran has been welcomed into the international fold as Russia remains out of favor. Busy times for Europe and its foreign affairs chief, Federica Mogherini. She sat down with Europe on TV and our first question, what could be on the way after France invoked an EU treaty solidarity clause following attacks in Paris? Somehow we are in, new, in a new territory because it's the first time we use uh, an article of the treaty. And I believe this uh, has uh, a very important uh, uh, significance politically because it means that also in the field of defence we can use the articles of the treaties that are there. To develop the common security and defence policy? To develop even more because we do have 17 uh, EU missions and operations around the world already. So we do have a capacity there, out there uh, already. But there are treaties, articles of the treaties that we can use even more. And this is an example for that. But what about a combined military response by the member states of Europe? I do not see uh, a future EU military intervention in Syria or in Iraq. I said this that several times. The European Union is having a role, a crucial one, on Syria and the fight against Daesh on two tracks. One is the humanitarian assistance we give inside Syria and around Syria. And second is the support and the facilitation we are providing for the political talks to try to solve the crisis in Syria. There is talk that will happen in Geneva on January 25th involving all the key players from Russia to the EU to Iran. What is expected from these talks? Uh, what we've done uh, immediately after having reached an agreement with Iran on their nuclear program uh, after the summer uh, we have pushed for uh, forming uh, an international support group for Syria uh, with all the relevant actors in the region and the international scenes. The talks among the Syrians that are supposed to start within a few days in Geneva are going to be the starting point of, on one side, a political transition. So yes, a transition means that you start in one place and you end up in another one, in Damascus. Uh, in parallel, a ceasefire among all those that are fighting the internal civil war in Syria that could allow us to unite forces to effectively fight against Daesh and defeat Daesh. But Bashir al-Assad specifically, can you see him continuing? The international community does not have a common stance. You know that very well. Iran and Russia have one position. The European Union, uh, our American friends, others in the region do not have the same position. The important point is that rather than simply stating as we have done for four or five years now, that Bashar al-Assad has to live and he's still there. Mm. We start a process that allows the transition to begin. The only way of defeating Daesh, not only fighting but defeating Daesh, is to stop the civil war and unite forces against the major threats. Now changing gears and coming to a former, you could say, um, international pariah, Iran, how do you see relations with Iran developing? And how good is it for Europe? For Europe, it's going to be uh, very good. Uh, from an economic point of view, uh, that's quite obvious. Uh, Europe has always been the strongest actor uh, in an economic uh, uh, or commercial uh, scene in Iran before the sanctions were introduced. And you see this very clearly already. Uh, it's mainly for the European uh, businesses to go back to invest uh, and cooperate with Iranian uh, businesses. Uh, but I see a lot of possible fields of cooperation between the European Union and Iran in the field of uh, uh, research and science and uh, technology uh, or culture. Uh, we have plenty of fields where cooperation is possible, none of them excluded. The real success will come when this agreement will manage to open the way for different kind of relations, more cooperative relations between Iran and Saudi Arabia and other countries in the Gulf and in the region. This is the real investment. Can you see a problem occurring in the future where the West is, is, has to choose between uh, Sunni versus Shia? Tensions are there today and this is self-evident. In this moment, uh, these are very serious and there is a serious risk that the bilateral tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran could develop in something uh, bigger for the region and for the rest of the world. But on the other side, look back one year, two years, Ago. To the relations with Iran itself. Relations yeah. with Iran were a completely different uh, moment. An agreement was far uh, from, uh, from reality. Uh, we were working on that, but we were very far away. The sanctions were in place. And what happened just a few days ago with the release of prisoners of uh, US uh, citizenship in Iran 
and Iranian citizenship in the US was uh, unconceivable just one year ago. So things can change and can change in a positive way. And then just lastly, what next for Russia? Sanctions on Russia uh, have just been uh, uh, rolled over in December. The European Union was, is and stays united on this, on the fact that this is linked to the full implementation of the Minsk agreements. There is no change in policy there. I hope in the future okay. to improve relations with Russia on other issues. We work in a, a constructive way with Russia. Think of the Iranian deal I just mentioned, we did it together. Think of the situation in the Middle East, we work together. Think of the situation in Libya. All the work we do in the UN Security Council, we do it together. On the Ukrainian issue, on the annexation of Crimea, our policy stays the same. But our wish is that our relations with Russia could improve and that the Minsk Agreement could be fully implemented. Glad you missed my green. You have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us on your part. Thank you.